The week ended as it started, with a dose of reality, balanced by a faint light at the end of the tunnel. The bottom line is this. The World Bank says uncertainties and risks still weigh heavily on the global economy. Debt, inflation, banking crises throw into a conflict on Europe's doorstep, a key factor for the lack of consensus as the meetings drew to a close. Over the week, we had very productive and constructive discussions, and the meeting, I think, concludes with a strong message of confidence and willingness to cooperate. We have tried our best to reach a communique. Unfortunately, this has not been possible. Russia's war against Ukraine continues to inflict economic and humanitarian losses for the global economy as a whole, and it continues to be the single most important source of uncertainty around the world. The IMFC's chair keen, though, to offer a hint of optimism. Many of the circumstances we're living are not unprecedented. Um, we have seen wars and pandemics, inflationary pressures, financial instability in the past. Let us keep in mind and learn the lessons of the past, the lessons that history teaches us, and not forget that peace and multilateralism, as opposed to war and fragmentation, have brought progress and prosperity to millions of people all around the world. And I think this allows us today to close with a message of confidence to markets and citizens. True, these circumstances are not unprecedented, but last week was one of many firsts. The first time, for example, that Chinese officials attended in person since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. For others, these meetings were their last. David Malpass, the World Bank president, is due to step down this summer, but not before urging states to work together on climate change, something he was last year accused by the White House of downplaying. Another big headline, the IMF's Africa Department pushed for a scaling up of financial support for some of the world's poorest nations in order to meet this decade's goals for poverty reduction. 2023 is proving a difficult year for Sub-Saharan Africa, exemplified most acutely by the big funding squeeze facing most countries in the region. As global interest rates have soared and the US dollar has strengthened, it has raised the cost of debt servicing and curtailed access to capital markets for countries. And speaking of interest rates, a senior IMF official suggested the US Federal Reserve should alter its monetary policy framework. The Fed has been rapidly hiking interest rates to contain inflation. The IMF's deputy managing director says central banks should anticipate more shocks to come and respond faster in the future. Benji Hayes, CGTN, Washington, D.C.